somehow keep you awake after all this lovely stuff. <laughs> I can't possibly top the previous one. <laughs> Are you ready? I'm ready. Right, here we go. Okay. So um, this is not about research data. This is about our special collections and the digitization of them. Uh, I'm a tutor at University Library. We've been doing digital stuff for like ages, and we recently made all things brand new and lovely and stuff. So I'm going to tell you a story about how it was and how it is now. Utah University Library in this circle may be more known for our IG2 archive, which is the repository for our company <coughs> output. But um, this is in this space, and we use this space for all sorts of other stuff, like our digital collections. We started digitization in the late 90s, before we even had this space, and we did lots of stuff. Um, about two weeks ago, we passed the 10,000 item mark, so we had a really tiny celebration of about 10 seconds, <laughs> <laughs> because nobody noticed we had more there. <coughs> oh, we don't just digitize, we of course we want to make it all public, and most of it is open access because it's special collections and it's all and stuff. But we can also do restricted access, like for this distillery, uh, which is rather more recent, so um, this is on campus only. The D space for us is a dark archive, which means we put all our TIFF files in, but the users never see D space, they have no idea, so we use separate websites to present our stuff. And we just keep stuff mm -hmm. in these space. And other things that we use in these space are like student thesis and stuff. <coughs> we used to have these two really old websites, which I made somewhere in around 1999. <coughs> they were lovely when we first made them, but well, you can see they start to look a little bit old fashioned. <laughs> and this is just the simplified scheme of how things work. So we had two websites, they each had their own workflow, they had their own file system, they had their own code. And then we suddenly had to make another collection which had sort of a weird workflow which started somewhere in the middle of an existing workflow and nobody could keep score. This is some of our stuff. As you can see, documentation was sorely lacking. So all the knowledge about all the special code was all in one head. And well, just adding new stuff was becoming really, really difficult. Plus, it was on separate technologies. There was Perl there and PHP and whatever. So last year, we came up with a large project to make it all better. And we also wanted to use DSpace as the center of stuff, not just putting in our files, but also use it as the center of all <coughs> sorts of neat stuff. So this is our lovely project. And one of the other things we wanted to do is, well, people have been asking for new stuff for like years. We finally could do some things like PDF for entire items. Before that, people had to download a book one page at a time. So imagine we have a book that is about 1,200 pages. You don't download that one at a time. And we also wanted to reuse our derivative files. For instance, this is from uh, a separate site which focuses on veterinary sciences and we used to have copies of the derivative files just for that thing so now we have a central thing of course a project to never go easy there were lots of things we had rather more files than we anticipated the metadata didn't quite map to each other so we had to do all sorts of conversions and um, of course, we found that the software we used, although open source still had bugs in it, so we got a couple of bugs. But we got there with hard work. About 31 people worked on it, putting in about 4,000 hours, all in all. And we made new uh, derivative copies of about a million files, which took one quite a while. This is our new nice and clean workflow. <coughs> metadata and TIFF files go into DSpace. DSpace then starts a project, a process which makes JPEG files, which makes um, web services to, for the metadata. Discovery is not through DSpace but through our catalog because 
usually don't see these bays. Um, and you can, if you click on this link, you either get to an index page if it's multi-volume work, or you get to the starting page of the showing version. So this is our book reader. This is the Open Library book reader. I switched it to the thumbnail view, where you can see all the lovely pictures and stuff that's in it. And there's options for you know browsing through the work. And we've added a few, which you can see on the left. A few other things like PDF and zooming. And this is the zoom. This is a map, and our curator of maps is very happy with this new zooming, thanks to IRP image. And they, you can zoom in on maps, which is really cool because they have these tiny little details. And this is an Indonesian map, by the way, which a lot of us can actually read, but it's still nice to zoom. <laughs> of course, it's not perfect yet. You can search on a topic, but if you do, you can get this really boring list, which doesn't really, it's just, you know, names and years. So that's one of the things we want to improve. Um, we also did some workarounds to make things work with, you know, the page order, which DSpace doesn't really support, so we have to make a workaround for it. And we can't at the moment show video like this one, which is from a nice 1950s thing, for, to tell farmers that they should use machines rather than horses. <laughs> but still, it's nice as it is. And well, you can see this is our lovely Maria Sibylle Mirian uh, insect of Suriname. And this is our lovely butterfly, it's one of our favorites. So we come, I can't tell you what more we want to do with these bays, so we hope to be here next time to tell you more about it. Thank you.